So good morning. Today what we are going to talk about is our FX25 batches which is a new initiative we have started. So the objective of this exercise was to create a more personalized kind of a services to each and every student. Right now when we look at this space, what we see is a kind of a YouTube videos are being run and all the students are made to sit in the crowd and there is no interaction with the teacher and the student. So personalization or customization is not the buzzword right now. So what we wanted to have a differentiation of the product was we wanted to create a services which is very as personalized as possible. So we came with an initiative of an Apex 25 batches and even we tried this experiment in the last six months. So what we were able to find out was the Apex 25 batches students were uh, the success rate usually our hovers around 90 to 91 percent. So what exactly we saw was in Apex 25 batches, the, the success rate actually grew by around uh, 7 to 8 percent. So the success rate was 98 to 99 percent. When I say success rate, what I mean is the people closing to around 98 to 99 percent in percentile in the mock tests. So the Apex 25 batches after uh, a six months of, uh, I would say, a kind of an experimentation, we started this kind of a exercise and we we gave this product we started we published this product uh, this week only so what is an apex 25 batch so what was the before moving into the each and every characteristic of an apex 25 batch i'll talk, first talk about um, uh, what was the, uh, the theme what was the basic understanding when we started thinking about it about this kind of a product so the first thing uh, i would say is uh, we wanted to create a thing which is a unique value proposition, okay? A proposition or a product which is very personalized and I would say which would never be repeated in the market. So a unique value proposition providing was the first target of ours. The second was to create a unique learning environment. So what we wanted was that we can should be able to create a situation or uh, classes in which the interaction with the student and teacher is as much as possible or as or you may call it much more optimal in a, in, in a way. So this kind, this Apex 25 batches came into being. The next thing was uh, even the services part. So when we talk about the services in the industry, we usually see a kind of a batches in which everyone sits uh, just like uh, even a 50 percent dialer and a 90 percent dialer sits in the same batch same kind of a teaching is provided and they are not even concerned about what is the results, what is the success rate of the batch. So that was a, one of the thing which uh, even I will talk about when I will move into more further uh, things in the batch when I will be telling about each and every feature of the Apex 25 batch. So as the third thing which was very much I would say the theme or the basic root of this Apex 25 batches is to create a more uh, I would say individualized or you may call it more personalized attention kind of a batch. So uh, even uh, as a part of the learning environment we wanted to give a unique learning en environment and even uh, as a part of the teachers we wanted to give much more tailored, much more individualized, much more customized kind of a teaching we wanted to provide. Uh, so the first thing what we did was uh, we created a five level percentile based batches. So what exactly happens as a layman, if I'll tell you, if any person joins, let's say if any student joins our batches, what we do is we do an initial kind of a mapping exercise. And on the basis of which we divide the people into five percentile based batches. So what is an idea here? The idea is we are actually segregating the people on the basis of their learning till that time. I meant to say we, we will divide people into a six series. We call it series actually, six to 10. Okay, so there are five levels, six series, seven, eight, nine, and 10 series. So what exactly happens is six series means 60 percentile batch. Seven means 70 percentile batch. Okay, so what exactly is the idea here? We wanted to create, the first objective was to create homogeneous batch. So what exactly will happen in that batch is, the, all the 60 percentiles will be sitting in the batch. Or in the nine, Per series batch only the 90 percent LS would be sitting in a batch. So how does it helps? The first thing it helps is 
the most important thing when you as a student you have is a peer to peer learning is also a very important part in a batch so if you have the same percentile people that it will be a better interactive batch why usually what happens even in school or colleges what we see is when we make different percentile people sit together the people who are usually in the lower percentile will keep on getting into their group so what exactly happens is if a teacher comes or aapke class mein there are some people in the 90 percentiles and there are some people in the 60 percentiles so teacher would be teaching at the only the 90 percentiles so sari class 90 percentiles pe hi chal jati hai or uh, what is exactly it leads is in a class usually the if i go to the the ratio of the batch usually only the 10 percentile or 10 percent people are only i would say into the top range so what exactly happens is the people the 90 percent people who i couldn't call them uh, the low percentile but the i would call them they they were not in a way handled properly by the school or our education system i meant to say the point what i'm making is uh that i what in adu shastra we believe is we believe that everyone is a genius the only difference in what is created is when we are not looking at the people's weakness and we are not we are not trying to work on the people's weakness at a very lower level only and we keep on actually promoting people to different batches even when they are not learning the course in a total way yeah let me put it in a much more layman way i meant to say let's say we are in a fifth or a sixth grade let's say and if i am not able to understand let's say the lcm or hcf in maths so or let's say in english i am not able to understand what is the difference between an adverb and an adjective or let's say i am not understanding what is the past parts but what is what is the present parts so what exactly it will lead is let's say in a eighth class when you will come let's say they are talking about tenses and let's say they will talk about uh um, let's say present perfect tense and they will tell you how they will teach you um if in the present perfect tense you have to use has or have sentence structure i'm talking about plus they will say you will have to use a verb form the past participle form of verb now if in a sixth standard or a seventh standard i'm not understanding what is the past participle when in the ninth or tenth they say this is a structure of a tense i will not understand what they are saying so what exactly the point i'm making is when you promote people from one level to another you should only be promoting the person when he is a is at 100% of the batch i meant to say if you are even scoring 90% you should be promoted to the next batch reason being you are actually 10% you still you, you are weak in that in that standard you must be 100% you must be getting 100% only to get into the next batch so same kind of a structure we have created we can't change the school or the college education system so but we obviously can do it in adu shastra so when we are talking about the 5 percentile based batches what exactly we are doing is we are you cannot move to the next batch till the time you are scoring that percentile or you are 100% out of the bracket of a 60 percentile uh, if you are in 6 series you are a 60 percentile you can move only to 17 percentile only when you are scoring 70 it will not be 69 or 68 going into the 70 percentile batch so the point what i am saying is uh the first thing as i told you it will help the students to have a homogeneous batch and one more important thing is it will also helps his teacher a lot as a teacher if i'm going to a class and i'm aware that this is a 6 percentile batch or this is a 9 percentile batch it helps me a lot how does it help i'll tell you a simple point if i'm going to a 6 or a 7 percentile batch or a 6 series or a 7 series batch as we call it in our language i will know that i have to carry the class in the concept area i meant to say let's say in the what do we do in the teaching we actually do a concept then we apply the concept and then we do practice that's what we are doing as a teacher and as a learning part even you as a student is doing the same so what exactly we are doing it is 
uh, if I'm going to a six percentile batch, what I will do is I will only start the class with the concept. My 80 percent of class will be concept. If I'm teaching permutation and combination, the 70 to 80 percent of the class will only be the concept. But when I'm going to a 90 percentile batch or an 80 percentile batch, that class will be totally based upon the application practice. So I will assume that every of the class is aware of what is the difference between arrangement and and a and any and the permutation or a combination. What the difference between these two things? What is the difference by arrangement and what is the difference by selection? So I would assume many things and I would straight away move into the application of practice. And so it is not only about uh, the student perspective of learning better. It is even helps us to teacher a lot when I'm aware that what kind of a the people I'm talking to. So just like any artist, they are they would be very they are very happy knowing about their audience. For example, many of the times I've seen many of the people, the actors, even even uh, the comedy stars, the comedy, uh, the stand-up comedy when they do. In the starting, what they will do is they'll keep on throwing jokes of every kind, and they will try to see the reaction of the audience in every kind of a, um, a joke. And then they think, then they understand that this audience is actually belongs to this category, and so I'm going to carry my whole uh, stand-up act in this category. For example, if an engineering student comedy, um, I would say show is happening, it will have a very different joke compared to a, uh, let's say the jokes in any 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 party or a function where the family is. So the same thing. What the point I'm making is it helps the school teachers even a lot. <coughs> People are divided into five batches, percentile based batches, and it brings a lot of personalization in the services. The third thing what I'm going to talk about is a ability based model. Uh, this thing would be new to you. Now, uh, in all your school and the college times, you have seen a model which we call it as a um, time based model. Uh, in time-based model, you get promoted to the next class even if you are not 100%, uh, I would say you are not, even if you are not scoring 100% marks. I'll give an example to you. Let's say you are in a 10th standard and um, you are, uh, let's say, scoring 90% or 80% or 70%, then also get promoted to the 11th standard. So what we call it is as a time-based model in which you are getting promoted, not on the basis of ability, but on the basis of the time. So uh, obviously we can't change the school and the college education system or the university education system, but we can obviously do it in Hadushasa. So what exactly what we did was we have created an ability-based model. So in ability-based model, uh, just the same example if I'll give, get, uh, give you, like let's say 10th class, uh, let's say if I'm 10th standard I'm going to talk about, you are getting promoted only. To the 11th standard, you are getting promoted only when you are scoring 100% marks. So what we see is, if you're a 90 percentile, or a 90 percent scorer in 10th standard, what exactly we understand is that you are actually, you 10 percent, you still don't understand what the course is all about, what that standard is all about, what the, the knowledge even is around 10, um, uh, you score is lesser than the, uh, the needed one. So you are only promoted to the next level when you're scoring 100% marks. So this is what we call it as an ability-based model. And as I have told you, as we have a percentile matches, so you get promoted only with your ability and not with time. So what exactly it means? It, it means is um, the course can have a variable uh, uh, the time cycle. I mean to say, let's say we are completing, let's say the cap in seven to eight months. But some people would be able to complete the whole course in let's say five months. Some people would be taking even 12 months and more than that. So what I'm exactly saying is, it is not like that you can jump from one percentile dash to the another or in one series to the another just on the basis of time. So you need to score that marks to move into the next level. So the course time cycle is very rich. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is a validity of the course. Now many uh, students come to us and ask about the course validity. Now we have no course validity actually. We, you may even call it as no course validity or you may also call it um, lifetime validity. 
So what exactly we do is when we are running a one course time cycle, let's say uh, any any other course you may talk about SAT, CAT, GMAT, CUET, whatever the course you are talking about, many people are re-attempters. For example, many people will re-attempt even. For example, let's say in GMAT, if you are scoring let's say 7, 10, there are many people who give uh, it for more than 740s, trying to score more than 740s, 750. Same thing with the CAT. In CAT even we see many of the people trying to, uh, trying to uh, let's say, many people go for the one CAT, let's say in the second or third year, and one more who gave for a re-attempt. If you're not scoring uh, the percentile, let's say the required percentile or the percentile which they are aiming for. So in that case, what exactly happens, let's say you are scoring 98 points something and you want to have a 99, more than 99 percentile scoring. So you can go for one more uh, re-attempt. So in that case, uh, we don't charge any fees. We have a no uh, course validity or you may call it as a lifetime course validity, whatever you may call it. But the point is any uh, re anything, if you want to re-do re uh, uh, the course, there'll be no fees to uh, attach to it. So the next feature I want to talk about is a money back guarantee or I, what we call it as a fee, uh, fee back promise. So what exactly that promise is all about? In the Apex batches, we actually promise you more than 99 percentile. So in Apex batches, when we, when we talk about the Apex batches, we don't call it Apex 25. We call it 19 plus 99 percentile Apex 25 batch. So what is this money back guarantee? Uh, do we want you to uh, come to us and ask for your fees back? We don't. Uh, we, it's not a point where you, we are not focused upon the point of the money or the fee sale. Basically, the whole idea of a money back guarantee is to show our confidence in our pro product or in our course. Uh, basically, how much uh, we believe in the effectiveness or I would say the quality of our course. It is not about like, let's say, a kind of a travel agency where you travel you if you're not traveling you can get a refund back some not like that and money is not the point where in an education when you are talking the product people are not concerned about the fees rather than they are uh, more focused upon the quality of the product and obviously you can go to our results page or you can go to our any social media channels you will see what kind of a results we have what kind of a offers we we, uh, we have so you will see our results. I don't want you to, uh, I don't want anyone to see the money back promise as a, uh, looking at it as, a, as, as a, a kind of a angle of that uh, we are pointing out that you can get your money back or fees back. It's not about the money factor. Actually, the whole idea is to uh, tell you that how much we believe in ourselves or how much we believe in how much we are confident about our course effectiveness. Uh, all the Apex batches will have a batch size of 25 odd people, so an average of 25 people. Now, how we are able to reach that 25 number? Now, uh, when we are seen, we are seen in our total experience as a teachers, that if the batch move beyond the numbers of let's say 35 to 40, it's very difficult to give a personalized kind of an attention. And we also can go for a YouTube videos, YouTube live, and we want, let's say, a thousand people joining in, that we can do. In the last uh, one of uh, our, uh, we did a one live class, just like in the CAT 2024 only, on that day we just did an analysis and around 27 to 28,000 people joined in the live class. But we were not able to interact with any anyone in, the, in, the, in, the, in that group. Now the point what we are trying to make is, if your batch is very, let's say, more than 30 to 40 or people, you, your personalization will not be there. You, you will not be able to interact with each and every student. And it will be just like watching a YouTube kind of a video where the communication is a just a one-way street kind of a thing where the only communication is happening from the student, uh, from a teacher to a student and not the other way around. But learning actually involves the other way communication where the students are asking questions or the doubts or uh, they want to have some kind of elaboration, some kind of a uh, description they want to have. Now, uh, why not to go lower than 25? 
the idea of uh, if you are making a very low very low number batch let's say let's say um, 20 or 15 or 10 people batch your peer to peer learning one of the very important learning in a batch happens when you are interacting with your fellow people fellow students so that interaction is very important so you must have a balance between uh, a student teacher ratio and even you shouldn't have a batch very small so that a peer to peer learning gets hampered in apex batches when we are talking about not everyone can join the batch so uh, the membership uh, would be exclusive so um, very selective we would move with a very limited number of batches and so the seats would be very limited so there is an application procedure for that you have to apply for the apex batches no one can take an admission straight away into an apex batch we would um, to keep our success ratio very high we will try to have a kind of screening process in the starting so you have to apply for a batch and it will not be open for everyone so what is the procedure of application you have to go to the website or an app and for the, from there uh, at two rupees an application fees would be charged in only two rupees uh, in that what you have to do is a kind of a, a three process uh, a kind of a screening would happen so the first process would be your total academic past which you had till now this is the first thing we would be looking at the second thing we'll be looking at is the total profile of yours now when i say profile of yours it doesn't mean resume it means a kind of a document in which your total iq as well as the eq facets we can we would be should be able to see we are not only interested in your iq profile but main our interest is your eq profile eq basically iq stands for the intelligence intelligence quotient and the emo, uh, uh, eq stands for the emotional quotient so we are looking at more of a humane side of a person rather than the intellectual side okay now the third aspect we will be doing is a kind of a mapping entrance test to be taken so an entrance test to be taken on the basis of that we will call it as mapping entrance test now all the three things like your academic past your uh, your total profile and the third thing mapping entrance test all these things will be taken in consideration before uh, before inviting you for the apex batch so the membership would be ex exclusive there will be selection process and you have to apply for the batch okay it's not open to uh, uh, any, any students a student cannot straight away enter an apex batch one more more point i want to add is the class interaction uh, Obviously, when you are in a classroom a kind of a situation, you are free to talk to the teacher. You are, you can have every kind of interaction with the teacher. But when you are talking about the online mediums, like live online sessions, when we are talking about, uh, you in our model, uh, every of our courses have a all four kind of interaction in an online classes. For example, you will have an audio. You will have a video, you have a chatting, you can have writing, every kind of a uh, medium would be there. You can have an audio chat, video chat, even if you want to only do a chatting, you can do. And even if you want to write on a board, you can do. So there are all kind of a four interactive mediums. You would see, you would have, the students will have total controls over the medium. It will not be like a class where a hundred people would be sitting and they are talking, they are chatting they are writing anything and student and the teacher is not even able to see the chat or leave aside the interaction part so they can but they can see chat ko hi dekh hi nahi sakta aur agar wo dekh bhi lega to ek chatting mein jab bahut sare students hote hain to usme most of the times what will happen is it will be 70 to 80% will be just like you know a kind of a crap kind of a chat will start so a good interaction uh, with audio, a kind of a personalized uh, interaction if it is happening, it's very good in a batch.